Jules Verne has been a fundamental inspiration for Imagineers everywhere while creating Disney parks. And how could he not be, if his legacy is all we as species aspire for? Having hope, believing in creating a better future, and discovering and exploring new places and experiences. And Verne was an inspiration for not only Imagineers, but for the Walt Disney Company. Back in 1954, Walt Disney himself decided to produce his first film. And so, Walt Disney Productions came up with the blockbuster hit film, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The movie was, of course, based in Jules Verne's novel of the same name, where Captain Nemo explores the undersea aboard his iconic vessel, the Nautilus. Just before Disneyland opened in 1955, Walt wasn't completely satisfied with how Tomorrowland had turned out. So, he decided to ship the movie sets to Anaheim to turn them into a walkthrough attraction for this part of the park. The attraction was situated where the Starcade and the Star Trader are today. In 1959, a new attraction came to Tomorrowland. Disneyland Submarine Voyage was a scientific expedition into the unknown, where guests took the role of research scientists exploring submersible technology. While this attraction was very similar to some of Verne's stories, it was never directly inspired in a specific one. These two attractions coexisted for a while, until the 1960s when Tomorrowland began its first massive renovation and expansion. Submarine Voyage survived this renovation, but the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea exhibit was not that lucky, and after 11 years, it closed its doors in 1966 to make way for new attractions, like Adventure Through Inner Space, which is now Star Tours. When Imagineers were planning Walt Disney World, they were looking at Disneyland and deciding which ride should be duplicated at the new park. Of course, the popular e-ticket attraction Submarine Voyage would have to be one of Disney World's opening day attractions, but the ride would have to have a twist, and the project was given to Disney legend Claude Coates and his young Imagineer apprentice, Tony Baxter. This attraction team decided to mix two popular attractions at Disneyland, Submarine Voyage and the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea exhibit. So they redesigned the ride and changed it from a scientific journey to a fantasy one, adding key scenes from the movie to it and creating the subs to mimic the look of Harper Goff's iconic Nautilus instead of the submarines at Disneyland. The ride was, of course, an instant success, and remained a success for many years, but the high maintenance, among other things, resulted in the ride sadly closing in 1994. After the opening of Magic Kingdom, Tony Baxter started working on a new project. He was given the task of turning Disneyland's Frontierland relevant again, and create a brand new land. So, again drawing up inspiration from Jules Verne, Tony Baxter came up with Discovery Bay. Whoa, were you going to talk about the history of Discovery Bay? One of the most brilliant concepts that never came to be at a Disney park? Hey, Jack from Theme Park History. Yeah, we we're actually about to go into detail about Tony Baxter's ambitious and beloved concept. Awesome. Discovery Bay is one of the biggest what-ifs when it comes to Disney and its theme parks. Hey, if you wouldn't mind, do you think I could talk about Discovery Bay for a bit? I kinda know a thing or two about the land dedicated to all things Jules Verne. No problem, let's turn this into a crossover episode. Fantastic, let's begin. Discovery Bay came to be after miners from Frontierland took the gold they had discovered and moved west to create a steampunk port city made up of glass spires, golden towers, geysers, time machines, hot air balloons, and lighthouses, and was home to inventors, thinkers, philosophers, and dreamers. In this land, Nemo's Nautilus would be docked in the rivers of America. This ride would be a motion simulator called Nemo's Adventure, which would actually end up becoming the inspiration for Star Tours. Another e-ticket attraction within the land was the island at the top of the world. Based on the Disney 1974 Jules Verne film of the same name. Guests would board a Hyperion airship and take a trip to an island of paradise located where else but the top of the world. While the concept was amazing, the movie was a box office flop, terrifying Disney executives of turning the movie into a reality, canceling the Discovery Bay concept altogether. 20 years after the concept was dropped, Tony Baxter was named creative director for Disneyland Paris, or Euro Disney as it was known back then, meaning he was responsible for creating a brand new Disney park that had more of a European feel. Inspired by his work on Discovery Bay, Baxter would create a brand new concept for the park 
called Discovery Mountain. Discovery Mountain was a tribute to the stories of Jules Verne. The land would have featured its own unique space mountain, the Nautilus floating in a lagoon with a restaurant inside, star tours, and Cinemagic attractions. A much improved version of Horizons from Epcot and Journey to the Center of the Earth, a freefall ride designed by Imagineers years before they decided to create the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. The attraction would have thrust guests up and out of Discovery Mountain, offering a brief view of the park, before plunging down an open lava vent with bursts of steam and fire. At the last second, the elevator would have swung out and splashed through a waterfall instead. Sadly, due to many reasons, mainly budget related, Discovery Mountain was never built. While unable to build either Discovery Bay or Discovery Mountain, Tony Baxter would use the opportunity to create a brand new area within Disneyland Paris. Baxter would make the bold move of eliminating Tomorrowland altogether and instead create a fantasy version of the future as envisioned by European thinkers and visionaries. While this land features many attractions, some of which can be found in Tomorrowland at Disneyland or Disney World, there are two amazing attractions that cannot be found at any other Disney park. The first is Discoveryland's own Space Mountain. Called Space Mountain, from the Earth to the Moon, the attraction is based on Jules Verne's novel of the same name. This ride was designed as a launched roller coaster, blasting guests up a cannon bolted to the mountain's face and into a fantastical journey through the stars set to a riveting orchestra score, with tons of special effects matching the steampunk styling of the land and the fantasy novel origins of the ride. While it was a huge hit with guests, the attraction closed on January 11, 2005 and has been redesigned twice. The second is the Mysteries of the Nautilus. This attraction, which is still open today, is of course based again on both the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea movie and novel. It's a walkthrough attraction that lets guests explore Captain Nemo's submarine and witness the giant squid attacking the Nautilus. The attraction is actually a reimagining of the exhibit from Disneyland that was talked about earlier. I can go on about Discovery Bay, Discovery Mountain, and Discovery Land, but that's a story for some other time. Why don't you take it over from here? Even though the land never came to be at Disneyland or Disneyland Paris, there's still so much left of this story to tell, and I can't wait to see how it plays out. In the mid-1990s, Disney MGM Studios was searching for something to give life to its Backlot Studio Tour. The tram had become less and less popular, and Imagineers were working on ideas for supercharging the studio tour with more staged encounters and special effects demonstrations. Around this time, the company was working on a journey to the center of the Earth film, and this would have been a perfect fit for the tour. And with this, they came up with an excellent idea for a new stop of the tour that would take guests into a soundstage that would take them into a subterrain chamber of icy stalactites and endless caverns, a fiery, sweltering underground chamber to the ruins of an ancient Atlantean city, and finally, to the molten surface of the Earth's core, where they would have had an encounter with a 40-foot tall subterranean lava monster. But the film was never made a reality, and of course, that meant that the backlot tram tour scene would not be able to be made. So, all of this was sadly cancelled. Thankfully, this was not the end for Jules Verne-inspired attractions. In 2001, the Tokyo Disney Resort opened its second gate. This park is Tokyo Disney Sea. Tokyo Disney Sea is considered one of the best Disney parks, if not the best Disney park in the world. The park opened on September 4, 2001, and is owned by the Oriental Land Company. This park is the most expensive theme park ever built, estimated to have cost over $4 billion. So, you can imagine the marvels that this park holds. Tokyo Disney Sea has an overall nautical exploration theme to it. When it was being planned, the intention was to create a more adult themed park, including faster, scarier rides and shows designed more for an older audience. There are seven uniquely themed areas, or ports of call. The entrance to the park is Mediterranean Harbor, which opens up to six more nautically themed ports American Waterfront, Lost River Delta, Port Discovery, Mermaid Lagoon, Arabian Coast, and Mysterious Island. Each area area is amazing on its own and holds some amazing and unique rides, but Mysterious Island takes the lead. 
Mysterious Island is located within the caldera of Mount Prometheus, a huge volcano that serves as the park's icon. This island is, again, based on the Jules Verne novel, The Mysterious Island, which talks about Captain Nemo's lair. It is also known as Volcania Island, as featured in the Disney movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. When guests enter the island, they discover Nemo's secret base, complete with a harbor for his nautilus as well as a lab inside Mount Prometheus. Nemo is indeed both exploring the depths of the sea and of the earth, which allows guests to experience two of Verne's most famous adventures, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Journey to the Center of the Earth. And while Mysterious Island is the smallest area of the park, it holds both of these attractions, which are arguably the best in the park. The first attraction is 20,000 Leagues Under. This Stark Ride is a submarine-type attraction based on the Jules Verne novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and its 1954 Disney adaptation. Does this sound familiar? That's because this attraction is a successor to the original Magic Kingdom 20,000 Leagues ride. The ride concept was sent to Tokyo Disney Sea and was an opening day attraction on September 4th, 2001. The second attraction is one that many people think is the best Disney attraction built at the time, Journey to the Center of the Earth. In 1990, when the plans were being made for the different lands that would be created at Tokyo Disney Sea, Imagineers decided once again that they wanted to take a shot of having a whole land dedicated to Jules Verne and his novels. And so, an attraction based on Journey to the Center of the Earth was created once again. For this attraction, Imagineer Tom Thorderson took the concept of the two previously cancelled Journey to the Center of the Earth attractions, the MGM Studio Tour behind the scenes and the Discovery Mountain Freefall attraction, but he wanted to create a never-before-seen cutting-edge experience. To create this, Imagineers visited caverns and caves across the country to get the inspiration they needed for the look of the ride. They would also need cutting-edge technology. At first, Imagineers considered using a system similar to the one they used for the Jeep in Indiana Jones Adventure, but the plans for this ride were much more ambitious, and Imagineers needed a system that actually made the cars go at 65 miles per hour and not simulated. They had some experience before with this type of system thanks to rocket rods and test track. So they created the next version of the slot car, and this worked perfectly. Journey to the Center of the Earth is a gorgeous attraction. Just below the slopes of the Mount Prometheus, we can find some tunnel-shaped caverns accompanied by excavation lamps and volcanic foundations. There, the entrance to the attraction can be found. Upon entering, we're greeted by a volcanic section full of lava and incandescent stones. As soon as we go through the section, we enter Captain Nemo's layer. Here we find all of his experiments and notes of his discoveries. In this section, we can see his notes on a new creature that he discovered. This creature is a new species of anthropod that lives in the depths of the earth. Then we arrive at the Terravators, an invention that allows us to reach the depths of the earth. While this elevator only goes down a few feet, it gives the impression that we're going deep into the earth thanks to many lights and sound effects and movement. We get off of the elevator and enter a cavern, where we board the vehicles that will take us to our adventure. We first arrive into a cavern of colorful glowing crystals, before entering a giant mushroom forest, which is inhabited by strange insect amphibian-like life forms. These life forms are bioluminescent animatronic creatures. Before we can continue with our journey, an earthquake causes a cave-in of the tunnel ahead, forcing the car to go off its planned route and through the Earth's core, where we are forced to go into an undiscovered molten chamber. This ride takes us through Earth's core, where we see see some enormous eggs dripping with goo. Suddenly, a massive spider-like leg begins slamming on the cavern wall. That's when we realize we've invaded a nest. The cart turns the corner where a pool of molten lava awaits. And here it is. Inside this pool is a terrifyingly amazing animatronic, the Lava Monster. A molten millipede with spider fangs and glowing eyes with cool jagged rock forming a type of crown on the top of its head. The lava monster is definitely the mother of the eggs we encountered before, and it is mad. It turns 90 degrees and sees us, its eyes narrow in anger as it hisses. It rears back with its legs and fangs, gnashing and screeching. Then it lunges forward at the cart. This is one of the most amazing animatronics created by Walt Disney Imagineering. Thankfully, the cart accelerates and takes us out of the mountain and to safety. As you can see, this ride is amazing. And how could it not be? It took years and years for Imagineers to be able to bring it to life. And they did it beautifully. It is a fantastic tribute to Jules Verne's work, and it completely demonstrates the creativity and technological advancements that Verne once dreamt of. Thank you so much, Jack, for joining us today. If you guys want to know more about the history of Tokyo Disney Sea, go check out Theme Park History's newest video, where we join him to talk about one of our favorite Disney parks. 
You should also take a look at his channel. He has such amazing Think Park content. So be sure to subscribe. See you next week.